Hi everyone, welcome back to the next diecast. In today's video, I'll be unboxing and reviewing this 124th scale Lexus ES made by Jingli Fang or Jingli Fang. I've never heard of this brand before. Um, they're based in, in China. Um, I got this model from Amazon for only around $10. This was listed under Amazon warehouse deals, so it did have a pretty hefty um, discount to it. This model, along with several um, other 124 scale models that this brand makes, are sold on Amazon for usually between $20 and $25. Uh, these models are pullback models, apparently, and also include various features such as all opening doors, lights and sound, and some other interesting features that you don't normally see with 124 scale models. Oftentimes, these same models are sold as 132nd scale models and sometimes even 118 scale models. In the case of this specific Lexus, I've only seen the 124th scale version, at least as far as Amazon goes, but there might be some other scales um, out there. As you can see, it's in this kind of basic looking gray box that you see here. It has a giant 124 up there, and then here's all the various features that the model comes with on here. Um, Pullback, hood and tail case, whatever that means. <laughs> Open the door, lighting, voice, which I think is just a horn or something. 124 proportion, which is 124th scale basically. Model car, alloy die cast series, and there's the brand logo right there. Streamline design of car body, comma, fine. Okay. <laughs> Here's some additional models that you can find from this brand. I have seen most of these listed on Amazon, with the exception of this Lamborghini um, Oricon. I don't think I've seen that one on there. But all of these are available in both 124th and 132nd scale. That's cool that this brand is out there. I never heard of them. And it seems like you can primarily find these models on Amazon, but sometimes you can find them outside of Amazon on sites such as eBay. So we'll go ahead and get this model out of the box. Oh wait, anything on the bottom? Oh yeah, different things. Manufacturer. I don't even know what that says. <laughs> There's the address and stuff. Production date, November 30th, 2022. There's the Amazon warehouse deal sticker that they usually put on the boxes of anything that you get from, from them. Um, There's like a, I guess a price barcode or something. Requires three button batteries. Oh, they're included, okay. I guess we'll say. Something is rattling loose in here. I was expecting this model to be completely like destroyed and trashed, including the box, because I got it for um, less than 50% of its original price because it was from warehouse deals, but it looks like the box isn't really that damaged and the model seems okay too. But we'll see once I get this actually out of the box, which I'm gonna do right now. All right, so the tape was broken on this side, so I'm just gonna pull this flap here to get it out. It is packed in styrofoam, which is interesting. You don't usually see that for lower end models like this one. Um, I'll try to pull it out. All right, gotta pull it out, and here's the styrofoam casing that it comes in. Just lift this off. And there's the model, it already looks pretty interesting. This is true 124th scale, I believe, too. The ES is kind of Lexus's mid-size luxury sedan, and this is kind of the current version that's currently being sold. I think they first launched the current generation of the ES in 2019, I, I want to say. So, looks cool. So, we'll pull this out. Wow, that's interesting. It is a pullback. I didn't... I mean, I figured it would actually be a pullback. I was just so weirded out by the fact that 124th scale pullbacks existed. Because usually when you think of a pullback car, you think of like a smaller, like 143rd to 132nd scale car. But, okay, that is cool. Wow. Not sure what the rattling was. Oh, there's a door opening tool too. Look at that, that's what was rattling around. It's in the back seat here. That is so interesting. Okay. So here's a pull tab for the battery, or for the batteries. There's a button here. Push it or something. Oh, there we go. <laughs> it's 
That's actually really cool. Not a sound that a Lexus ES would make, but at least they include that on, on there. Is this part? Okay. That's your sound. Or your voice. <laughs> That is actually really cool. Kind of looks a bit on the cheap side, especially when you look at the interior, but I mean, that's cool that you can get all these features on an actual die-cast model or an alloy die-cast model. I see a button down there. I'm not sure if that does anything. Maybe it opens the hood. It does open the hood. So, of course, you do have the opening hood. There's the engine. And you also have four opening doors, and this opening trunk, too, which I keep forgetting that also has. Doors are a bit tough to get open, as you can see right now. All right, I got this side open without the door opener tool, but I shook out the door opener tool, and here it is. We'll see how the other side looks. And the car did make some sounds when I opened up the driver's door here. Let me see if I can show you. We'll open it again. That is ear piercing. <laughs> Let's see if this makes noise too, if you open up this door. The tool is hard to use. It, you know, you have to kind of, like the door handles are too small for this tool to fit. I'm sure it's just like one universal door opener tool that this company uses for all their cars, but the Lexus has kind of small door handles, so it's really hard to get it. All right, no sound there. Maybe this back door makes sound. Nope. No, that's... Yeah, see, look at that. It's really, it's really hard to, even with, I, I am doing it with uh, one hand because I'm holding the camera, but there we go. ES300H, that's the exact model name of this Lexus model, but there we go. That's really interesting. Here's the model with all the doors open and the hood and the uh, trunk. So next we'll kind of take a closer look at all these odd features and see if the details kind of um, hold up compared to other 124th scale models that are currently out there right now. And before I do that, here's the sound that this door made um, when I wasn't filming at that moment, and I open it for the first time. So to make it to so to make it make the noise, you just have to kind of do that. And there, there's all the different sounds that the car makes. Very odd. <laughs> all right, let's take a closer look at this unusual Lexus model. Um, it's interesting and unusual in a number of ways. It's a 124th scale car with a pullback motor. It's full die cast, it has full opening features, it has the lights and sound. Um, just kind of odd in a number of different ways. Uh, the brand is kind of obscure, I guess, as well. If you look on Amazon, there are various other 124th and 132nd scale pullback cars, kind of similar to the, this one here, where they have all the opening features, the different light and sound functions, and whatnot. Um, they're all usually between maybe $18 and $30, depending on the model and the brand that makes it. I did get this for only a little bit over $10 because it was from Amazon Warehouse Deals. So I think that was a steal for that price. I think the model is fairly well done as a whole, but there are definitely some areas I think here and there that could be improved on. So in terms of just the overall look and shape of the model, I think the brand did a good job of capturing the look of the Lexus ES300H. And on the front portion here, you'll see the headlights, which are well done for the most part. They do actually fit fairly flush with, with the body. They're kind of thick in terms of the lenses, but they do look um, decently done. Nonetheless, you have the famous Lexus kind of spindle grille in the center here, along with that badge, which does have a reflective uh, finish to it, which looks great. Um, then you have these lower kind of intakes or grills down here as well. Um, this does have the pullback function, as you saw in my in the unboxing portion. So that's kind of an unusual feature. It is squeaky, as you kind of heard just now, but the fact that this is a pullback model in general, I think, is a really cool. The paint quality is pretty good for the most part. This is a kind of glossy black finish. I think there might be another color of this, but I'm not too sure. I think I might've seen a white version at some point, but the kind of saddle colored interior, I think does work well with the black paint. You do have some chrome trim going along the doors here or along the window frames, and you have the silver door handles, which I believe would be chrome if it were the real vehicle. 
Um, the mirrors are very sturdy, which, which is nice to see. I think they're made of a die cast too. A lot of times on these 124 scale cars, you'll see kind of separately cast on plastic pieces for the uh, mirrors. The wheels look okay at best. Um, they're kind of cheap looking and a little bit unrealistic compared to the real rims on the real vehicle, but at least they have a decent overall look to them. And then you do get full side windows on the model as well, which is a nice touch. Back here, decent looking tail lights. They're kind of, again, on the thick side like the headlights are, but at least they're separately cast plastic pieces. These lower lights down here are just painted on and they do look a little bit cheap, but a lot of um, lower end models kind of have that for 124th scale um, tail lights. And you do have the Lexus badge and the Lexus inscription, which is kind of weird because instead of the US, at the end, it has kind of a weird looking ES. I'm not sure why they did that. And then you have the ES 300 badge or inscription, I guess I should say, on the right side of the license plate frame. Decently done. And then on the rear window, you have the defroster lines, which are kind of on the big side. I kind of wish they skipped out on those because um, they do look a little bit overdone, I suppose, but they look um, decent at best. And you actually do get a sunroof on the model as well, which is a nice touch. Now this does again have all the different light and, and sound functions and, and all the opening features. So you do have the opening trunk, which opens up like so. Not really anything to see in there. And it does kind of stop right there. I'm not sure if maybe they have like the different like motor functions kind of hidden in this portion of the model. So they have a smaller trunk in here as a result, but not really anything to look at or speak of in here. You can kind of see the two cutouts for the dog legs. At, at least the trunk can be opened to begin with. A lot of 124 scale models don't have that feature, but on this one you do see that. So cool, it does kind of slam shut sometimes. Um, and then you do have the opening hood, which there actually is a button underneath that you can raise the hood with. So you push that and then lift it up like so. One single plastic piece for the engine but still looks some decent. Nonetheless, you have the V6 symbol right there, and the main block is kind of done in a three-dimensional look. It is just one plastic piece, as I already said, um, but there is at least a little bit of different um, coloring going on in there and some detailing. I think it looks okay for a 124th scale of vehicle. And they do fully paint the underside of the hood, which is another um, interesting touch. Close that up. And of course you do have the four opening doors and also the, the different sound functions that you can hear, I guess, when you open up each of the doors. So of course you have the sound function where you push down like that. So yeah, the sounds do sound a little bit cheap, I guess. <laughs> and kind of odd. I sort of wish that they retained the working lights, but you can just like switch them on and off. The only way to see the working lights is if you activate all the different sounds, which are quite loud. If you don't want to hear all the different sounds and you just want to be able to open up all the doors or push down on the suspension without that feature, I guess, you could always take out the batteries. It takes three of those button batteries. Um, they already come pre-installed in the model, as you saw when I got it out of the box. So that's cool that you don't have to get them yourself, but you can always just um, take them out if the sounds are bothersome to you, which I may end up I'm doing that eventually. <laughs> but you do have all four opening doors. Do the opening driver's door, and they do give you this uh, door opener tool, as you saw when I unpacked the uh, model. So, oops. and they do spring shut. I always end up using my fingernails because it's just easier that way. Yeah, that sound is annoying. <laughs> I don't know if that's meant to be like the, yeah, there's the locking function. I don't know if that, that's meant to be like the reverse beeping noise or if it's just like the car alarm. I don't know. It's annoying nonetheless. <laughs> um, the startup feature, or the startup noise, I guess, and the revving is at least somewhat cool, but that beep was just no. Too ear piercing, at least for my taste. <laughs> and the back door does open as well. Fortunately, no noises scream out at you when you open up the rear doors. So we'll go ahead and open up the other side too, like that. This tool, again, as I already said, I think was made just to be a universal door opener tool for all this company's different pullback models. So it doesn't fit quite well in the door handles of this Lexus, but I imagine that the company makes some additional models where you actually can fit this fully in the handle and use it properly. But it's just easier to use like your fingers for this one here. And that's a bit of a challenge too, but that's because you have all the side um, windows. 
I forget what noise is made when you open up this door. I guess we'll find out. Nothing. Interesting. I could have sworn there, there was a noise. Oh, well. <laughs> it looks like the little sensors for the sounds are on, or like those little blue dots, perhaps. I'm not totally sure how, how this works. It'd be interesting to take these apart and kind of get a better idea of how the sound functions work, but I don't know if I want to do that just out of fear of possibly like ruining it or something. I don't know, but it's cool that, that this exists to begin with as unusual and odd as the model is. And the fact that I don't think it's officially unlicensed either, but it's still cool that you can get these to begin with. The interior looks a little bit tacky. Um, the coloring looks okay at best. Um, I wish it was kind of a more brown and kind of this shiny, I don't really know what to call it, this like saddle color. Um, it does have this, these odd kind of yellow accents. I assume they were trying to go for like a lighter beige, but instead it ended up turning out to be like yellow. Um, the buttons are at least somewhat okay. Oh, look, there's a little hole right there. Maybe that's where the sound sensor is. I'm not really too sure on that. There's a few buttons there on that portion of, of the door. And you do get a few buttons and vent details on the center stack here. And, it, and I will give them credit for it saying Lexus on that screen there. But it's a very kind of cheap and sparse looking interior. It almost seems like the interior should go in, in like a 143rd scale model instead of a 124th scale model. But I guess because they didn't get the official license for this, they couldn't really do a whole lot in terms of details on the interior portion of, of the model. And the steering wheel does have the Lexus badge in the center, as you see here. These seats do have, I guess, the right overall shape to them. It's just weird that they have that yellow kind of accent on them. I think if they had gotten rid of those, because you see it on the seats, like on the seat backs and seat bottoms of the front seats and also on the different door panels. I think if they had gotten rid of those and just had this be all one color, it would have looked better. I mean, I get that they were trying to add a little bit of more detail by creating those yellowish beige accents, but I think it honestly would have looked better if they had just made this all one single saddle color finish. I don't even know what to call it, but yeah, definitely could use some more um, detailing in here, but I assume they had to cut costs in some way since they had to put all these different sound and light functions and the pullback motor inside the uh, car. The fact that you can open up every single fixture on the car in general, I think, makes up for the lack of interior detailing. But, you know, I did pay $10 uh, for it, and I think even for $20, this is okay. I wouldn't probably pay that much more than that, seeing how not so great the interior detailing is, but you can kind of be the uh, judge of that I suppose, once you see my review here. Um, aside from that, not really a whole lot else to cover in terms of the finer details or the interior of the car. So you can close up all the doors like this. They all just kind of snap shut. I assume that, and the doors do feel nice and sturdy when you open and close them. So I assume they will uh, hold up well for from years of being opened and closed repeatedly. So you don't have to worry about build quality because th this model does seem to have good um, build quality. And on the bottom, you kind of already saw not really anything to say. You have the big massive speaker for the sounds and whatnot. So if you're looking for a relatively inexpensive Lexus model to add to your collection in 124th scale, I think these Chinese made um, pullback models are definitely an option for you. Uh, but just keep in mind that some of the details aren't going to be necessarily correct compared to what you would see on the real vehicle. And the sounds, although they're cool, can be a little bit um, annoying and um, loud. <laughs> I kind of wish that they retained all those sounds, but perhaps had a switch on the bottom of the car that you could sort of flip on and off if you want to hear certain sounds. And the fact that you do have the working lights is also very, very cool especially for, for the price that you can get the model at, but the lights only work with the, with the sound. I imagine that making the lights kind of independently functional from the sounds would kind of be, I guess, pricey to do for the company, so they didn't do that, but um, it's an interesting model to get nonetheless. So if you're a fan of, you know, Lexuses or luxury sedans or just, you know, quirky 124th scale models in general, I think that that this model here would be a good one to get for your collection. So feel free to comment down below with, with your thoughts on this unusual uh, model here. And let me know if you've um, bought similar models and what you think of those as well. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching.